Are you sitting comfortably? Then we'll begin. Right now, at this very moment, as you watch these light rays striking the magnified eye, similar tiny beams of light are entering your own eyes. And it's by our eyes that we are able to gain a great part of our knowledge. More than 70 million people go to the movies each week to get away from their cares and to find entertainment, romance and thrills on the magic screen. of the motion picture is tremendous. It brings to us the life of fallen lands and strange peoples. The theater screen gives pleasure and enlightenment to millions every day. You know, the thing is, I think having a point of reference for everything is really important. And being able to have a point of reference for what, what a good cinema experience is will set a great precedent for when you go to the movies. When I was a kid, growing up, I went to so many movies, but I don't know if, if all kids go to the extreme of actually cutting out the movie ads and putting a check mark beside the theater that they were going to actually go watch the film at. And I would, as corny as some of these movies might be, you know, I looked forward to going to the theater as much as I did uh, actually getting to see the film. So this is the place where I watched my very first movie. This was the twin drive-in. Today, you wouldn't even know it was there. This used to be the Plaza Cinema, another theater that I went to as a kid. After it closed in 85 or 86, it ran for a while as a bingo hall. This is the old Odeon Theater. And when I was a kid, I remember lining up on the sidewalk. And I don't remember the last time I've lined up on the sidewalk to go see a movie, at least not in this city. And there's something special about that anticipation that was built by lining up on the sidewalk. Even in a harsh Edmonton winter, standing on the sidewalk, waiting in line to get your ticket, it actually, it actually meant something. I'm grateful that I had the opportunity a couple of months ago to excavate this theater one more time. And the flood of memories that came back to me of seeing films like Weird Science and Stand By Me and Out of Africa and Gandhi all came back to me. end of cinema as we know it. And these places were deserted, not just by the moviegoers, but by the industry. It's like entering a submarine. <laughs> oh, man. Because with this particular theater, I think what they did was close this theater and opened up a multiplex downtown. And uh, they just abandoned it. <laughs> Edmonton's $500,000 Odeon Theatre. It's the newest of modern Odeon theaters being built from coast to coast. I think old movie theaters have, have been lost and they're gone. But I think we need the imagination and the creation of an, a new group of people to come in and go, what can this be, not what has it been. You 
know, you can call me crazy, but I really believe the cinema matters. I believe, whether we know it or not, that we go to movies for the same reason we go to church. We go to movies to make sense of the world. And I've come to believe that even a bad movie can be a good movie in a great movie theater. I want to know that there are still cinemas that care about service. I want to know that there are cinemas that still care about ambiance. I want to know that there are still theaters that care about the audience. And I want to find out if other countries are doing it better than we are. So I want to take that journey and go see whether the grass is greener on the other side. So when I researched theaters to go to and researched historic theaters that were being preserved, I read about one in Bowness, Scotland, just outside of Edinburgh. The Hippodrome was Scotland's very first purpose-built theater. And so when I read about the town, the municipality actually investing in saving the theater, I knew it was a place we had to go. It's interesting to see how the township's attitude is that it's a place that can create jobs, it's a place that can uh, generate revenue for the city. So it really turns the corporate model of the movie theater on its head. The Hippodrome was built in 1911 specifically as a cinema, and we believe it's the first purpose-built cinema in Scotland. The movies was such a, a big part of your life in those days. You know, there wasn't the amount of entertainments and the choice that you, you've got nowadays. I think for, for a lot of small towns, the, the movie theatre was really, really important and the Hippodrome in Bowness was no different. And even in, in hard times, people could come and be entertained and they remember the, the pleasure they had out of it. The Hippodrome showed its last film in, in 1975 and, and then it operated for a few years as a, as a bingo hall until the early 1980s and then it closed its doors and, and fell into disrepair and many people were really worried about its future. I've known the Hippodrome for quite a number of years and when I first saw it, it was in appalling condition. The research amongst the local people was that it was a building that actually they wanted to, to, to be preserved. Normally when a building is being renovated, it's cleared out and they start from scratch. That didn't happen here. We preserved the um, museums and art galleries. Why shouldn't we preserve the cinema? This has been renovated and preserved for our future generations. I think it's important for local authorities to recognise that cinemas are a part of communities and cinemas are very often in town centres at the core of the, uh, the towns and they can often be the key to getting that town back to some kind of vibrancy. And I do know when people come into the Hippodrome you see them looking at the building which you just which you don't see that in a, a multiplex. People come in and they sit down and watch the film but in the Hippodrome they will look at it. modern projectors and, and sound equipment so they get all the, the nice things that we get in a modern cinema but they also get all the kind of glamour and excitement of going to an old-fashioned movie theatre. Are we competing with the multiplexes or are we doing more than that um, and I think the policy at the moment is we're actually doing more than that.
The cinema has always been a place that I've retreated to when life gets a little bit rough. So I've always wondered whether there is a legitimate therapeutic value to going to the movies. And so when I heard about the Medi Cinema in London, England, I thought this is an ideal opportunity to explore that question. I started Medi Cinema because of my love of cinema, not just film, but the whole experience of going to the cinema. It did surprise me that there was a cinema here. I'd never heard of anything like that before. I just thought it was such a wonderful idea. I obviously daily saw patients walking around with their trips, uh, people looking very bored, nothing to do. I, I sort of realised you can wheel beds off wards into a different environment and why not, why shouldn't that environment be a cinema? When you first go up to collect the patients, they're quite shy, they don't really know what to expect, you know, they're not very chatty, they've been in the hospital, some people for months at a time. But if you can bring them down to an atmosphere like this, I mean, you are inside a cinema, so for those two hours, they can just forget why they're here. That you're able to come down and watch top-line movies that are, have just been released and it gets you away from the world, it gets you away from the fact that you're in here, that you're sick, you know, for many, many reasons, and, and brings you back, in a way, to normality. Uh, medicine is a huge motivator for the patients, okay, it gives them a little bit of a lift. It's, it's, it's escapism, it's, it's, it's distraction. It can help motivate and, and inspire people. It's a very special place. You, you literally can come in here and absorb yourself in the pictures and the sound. Um, there's nurses around, so you, you, you never feel that you're too far away from assistance if you need it. They always bring your water around, so you're always in a comfortable environment. And being able to just have what you class as a normal experience, being able to go to the cinema, be able to and take friends to the cinema and engage in that way. In the cinema there's a secondary factor where you've got people around, it's experiencing the same intent level of engagement that you are. And it's that sense of being part of a wider community and, and hearing that feedback from other people that they're experiencing something that you're experiencing. You know, all that magic on the silver screen um, is, is just not comparable. And it's that experience that I think makes the patients feel better. Once people are here, they're not the patients, the vulnerable patients sitting on the board, they're cinema guys. It's the start of feeling that you're reconnecting with the real world, especially if you've been in here a, a long period of time as I have. This is a typical layout of the stage set with two horns behind the screen. While the picture is being shown, the sound which was recorded is reproduced in step with the picture. The screen is full of small holes so that the horns may be placed behind the screen to let the sound through. This gives the illusion that the sound is coming from the image of the speaker. So while we were in England, I thought it would be worthwhile to make the jaunt over to Nottingham home of the world's smallest cinema, the screen room. It's an interesting idea to me that in today's multiplex culture, where you try to get in as many people as you can at one time and get them out as quick as you can, that there could be a cinema that only has 20 seats or so, and that it could be a financially viable business. We are in the Guinness Book of Records for being the world's smallest cinema, and yeah, you, you could perhaps say that what's the big deal about that. My brother, when I talked to him about this, made the point that what you actually mean by being the world's smallest cinema is you mean you're the world's uh, least financially viable cinema. <laughs> and that's what you should be in the record book for. It is a 21-seat cinema, and everyone always talks about there's a really nice, you know, uh, intimate atmosphere to watch a film. And you, and you notice there's a bit more integrity in the, the smaller cinemas. They know they know their audience better. They know the sort of good films, and 
I, I'd like to think that there's sort of a reflection uh, on, on the cinema in what films you play. That's the journey I have to make, like, 20 times a day, I guess. Uh, and yeah, this is a projection room. We're projecting from behind now, so we're, behind, we're now behind the screen from where we were sitting before, about as far away from the screen as we were before, on the other side of the screen. And that's the reason now we're, we've got a projector pointing at 90 degrees to the screen, it's pointing in this direction, and it's bouncing off this mirror and going onto the back of the screen. I mean, we used to have a few people help out and do projection, but yeah, at the moment it, it is just me. And so, yeah, that does... <laughs> There are involved a few challenges, and uh, the main one is to have a good watch and stopwatch and know exactly where you need to be within every second. And so, like, yeah, a normal time where I set up the film, come back round, sell tickets. When there's a slight lull, <laughs> dash back round, start the film, run back round, sell a few more tickets, run back round, turn the lights down, run back round, close the door, and then repeat. <laughs> This is the box in which a film will come in. They come on five reels like that, and I'll have to spend an hour or so just putting those together onto one big reel like this. What is it, 24 frames a second or whatever, so this is about three kilometres long or something. Because it's quite small. You really do know what other people are doing around here. I mean, we turn the sound up, but, you know, uh, it's very aware if someone's eating next door to you. <laughs> it's, it's a bit irritating, I think. And so we've done our best to try and reduce this problem. Because we don't sell popcorn uh, here. Uh, we don't sell any noisy foods. We've constructed our menu entirely around things that are, can be eaten quietly. And so we sell uh, cake and uh, ice cream and, and tea and coffee. And so it's quite... Those are the sort of... Uh, sort of items that are quite unusual to take into a cinema. I do take some pride in, in this place. I mean, it is because I'm so involved in every aspect of it. If I'm messing around or I haven't put the film together properly or haven't you know, sorted that out, I haven't been organised about that, then I'm the one that's going to get the brunt of it back there, you know. So if I don't do a good job, then people will start moving away and uh, they won't be coming here and we, we won't exist. I think there are lots of people that just don't get to experience the cinema and that to me is really sad and so at least try it, go out and go and watch just a, few, a few films in any cinema, you know, go to the multiplex, go to your independent cinemas come to us, <laughs> you know, but you go out and watch some films, absolutely, because there's some people I think that, that go through and are missing all of that because of, of DVDs and TV and internet, they just uh, literally have never been to the cinema, you'd be surprised what large fraction that probably is, you know, and I don't meet them because they never come here, but yeah, just go out, go out and watch some films, yeah. Friday night was movie time for Sally and Elizabeth. Friendships are easily made in a crowded theater. Often seemingly innocent places can turn out to be just where wrong associations are made. Could you please ensure that your seat belt is securely fastened, that the tabletop in front of you is kept up, and that your seat back is in the fully upright position? So many cinemas actually closing down and disappearing. I've really been wondering what happens to a town or city when there are no cinemas left. And when I heard about Ireland having a mobile cinema, I thought, this is something I gotta see for myself.
So I look forward to, to doing what I have to do every day. And, um, and I'd like to think I'm a particular in my own way because I'd be particular if I was a customer coming in. I'd like to see it in focus. I'd like to see the place reasonably clean. I'd like to think that, you know, I'd like it to be comfortable and whatever else. So for me, it's part of my job, yeah, to make sure the crowd is okay, to make sure everyone in there is acting okay. Uh, yeah, he's got skills. The man's got skills, <laughs> definitely. And uh, <laughs> the only thing he didn't do was come around with ice cream. <laughs> As part of the Millennium celebrations for this country, the government um, organised different things as projects. I think number one on the list was to bring a mobile cinema to the towns and villages around Ireland that didn't have access to a cinema. We get that booster. And just, just out in front of you, stick to these fires, and, and you fly right through, through the fireball, and you're on your way again. Go for staging. I think there is nothing nicer, yeah, than being in the cinema, doors closed, lights off, big screen in front of you, all the detail. No matter how big you're, if you're 32 inches at home, it's still, it's nothing in comparison to the screen, which is almost the width of, of the back of that truck. Last year, towards the end of Mamma Mia, and you see everyone, you have a full house <clears throat> at the end of it, you know, it kind of, kind of gets really merry, and they're all up clapping and doing this and doing that. And to see a full house doing that, um, it can top off your even, you know. You go back to your, wherever you're staying for the night and feel that you've uh, done a good job. Within 45 minutes of the last film being shown, you can have it all closed up and ready to rock and roll to the next town or village that, uh, that's on the list. It's one thing getting in, but it's a different thing getting out, you know. So I find when I come into a place, I'm not only thinking about where I'm setting up, I'm thinking, can I have it situated in such a way as to, that I can get out? This mobile cinema wouldn't work if there was a cinema here, you know. But it's nine years on the road. It's still, it's still busy. I can still see that machine being driven around this country in the, for the next 10 to 15, 20 years. Everybody has heard of Bollywood, and I think I'm fascinated with this idea that an entire nation is enamored with movie going, that it's, it's vital to the culture of the country. And I really wanted to see that for myself and experience it. We make the largest number of cinema. The films in this world, in this world, we do about I think 700, 800 films a year. People are exper experimenting with different kind of themes, with different kind of cinema. So that's a, we are, I think, at this moment at a very, very fascinating and interesting uh, phase in cinema in India. Just a film of me, Hota, hey, 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 Hota, hey
The Indian cinema has uh, helped a lot. You know, uh, it has created a sense of national identity. Uh, wh whatever the rhetoric might be, that there is unity within diversity in India. That uh, all of us have a, a certain uh, common purpose in, in some sense. Indian films, uh, right from the beginning, have had that reformist agenda. It has been a way in which in India has been united, so to speak, emotionally. The way it started was, I think we didn't have too many outlets to go out and entertain ourselves. So cinema became one of the easiest outlet where one could walk up to a theatre, just buy a ticket and uh, uh, have three hours. You can go, you know, uh, uh, and uh, see cinema which would transport you into completely another world. You look into a, a film, you, you become part of that world. It's, an, it's another world. It is related to this world, but it's another world. You walk in. To a, to a film, so to speak, as you do into a you know, perspective painting. You know, it's like going through a window. Watching a film in a theatre is a lot more powerful. It's just different. The darkness gives you a certain anonymity and you're one of so many people who are receiving either a work of entertainment or of art together. When you sit in that darkness and you sit in a place where, you know, it's so many films have played before this, so many films will play after this. There are people sitting around you and if you look up, you can see the beam and the dust particles shining. There is a certain holiness to a theatre. We've been wondering about this. Why are uh, Indians so uh, almost obsessed and such compulsive film lovers? And one of the answers proposed is that it's something like recreating a temple ritual. Uh, the moment where the uh, deity, the idol, uh, uh, is unveiled and the point where the uh, devotee, in our case the spectator, exchanges the look with the deity, with the idol. That, that moment is called darshan, to have a vision. It, uh, it is a religious feeling. See, the love for cinema was so much, we used to have 7 o'clock shows in the morning. And if the film was huge, it had generated enough hype, then we would have a 5 o'clock show in the morning. So I think that's the love of cinema in this country. The audiences are at every show you watch of a film will be different because the audience will be changing the way everybody is taking the film. They are whistling, they are clapping, they are jumping and dancing. It's like a mega event for them. It's not they're not quietly sitting and watching. They're clapping and they're dancing. A woman comes on the screen and there'd be whistles and and if, if if the guy does something you know just perfect, you know the way he holds a woman or the way he holds a cigarette or he, uh, or his way of dressing, people have always commented on that and they've not kept it to themselves. At some point people start get up, they just get up and start dancing in front of the screen. They think they are part of the plot and they change that plot by being involved in it. There are people who work uh, hard for salaries uh, and uh, they don't mind spending a good share of it on, on films. It's an escape, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's escape from drudgery. <laughs>
a great viewing experience and an audience to, to share it with. It's sad when now you have so many people downloading films and just watching them even on like their little iPhone on this little thing and you know so it's great to be able to come here and watch an old film that might not even be on DVD and uh, just being able to see it in the big screen and, and share it with people. We're film collectors as opposed to programmers. So we scour the internet and yard sales, all that kind of stuff, and buy films. I started collecting film about in 1995. So in eight years, I got 13 features each for about 40 bucks. So other people's trash is like, I love getting a film for like 40 bucks, especially no and doing research and stuff, knowing about the films. I'm like, you idiot, you just sold me The Fool Killer starring Anthony Perkins from 63 shot in Mexico that nobody knows about for like 60 bucks. So that's that collecting side is, uh, is super exciting. Because I don't collect these films to watch for myself. It's not what it's for. It's like I rescue, I save them. You know, you can watch a film in your home cinema as much as you want. Um, but if you're not sharing it with like-minded people, you're not sharing in that experience, I think, I think you do lose something. We collect these films, a lot of the time we, ha we haven't seen them yet. And I don't watch them in advance. We watch them with the audience. So that's really fun. Like, there's, it's just, it's different. It's not a regular movie theater. So um, one of the bonuses of coming here um, is you get a punch card. And each time you come in, you just punch it in a little box. And so you get things like um, free candy, drinks, popcorn. People who go out of their way to look for these places and go see films there are people who are genuinely interested in seeing the film. And I, th I think that makes for a better viewing experience. Like real purists, like real movie purists, don't like it here. You know, because it's like, I don't care that there's a hair in the gate. I don't care if the print is red. We do everything we can to explain to you. It's called the Trash Palace. There's no, there's no pretension. Just, it just is what it is. It's the Trash Palace. And, uh, and it lives up to its reputation, you know? Because we don't, we don't have one. <laughs> As you leave the theater, folks, please be careful. Don't let this happen to your car. Be sure to remove the speaker before you leave. If you should accidentally pull a speaker loose, please turn it in at our snack bar or box office. Thank you. With our drive-ins having all but vanished today, I was wondering if anybody has come up with a new way of exhibiting film outdoors. And so when I heard about the rooftop cinema in New York, I thought, man, that's really clever. And if they do it right, it can be really enjoyable for the audience. New York, I think, is one of the most vibrant cultural places in the world where people are always craving something new and a, and a unique perspective. And literally, that's what we're providing both on screen and with the view from the roof. Every year, we host about 44 screenings in 15 different outdoor locations all around New York, showing all new independent films that you won't see anywhere else. The reason it succeeds is a, you've got a really big, diverse population. Um, you've got also an architecturally fascinating landscape. Roofs are, even in the most busy places in the city, they're often places you can escape a little bit. Uh, we have live music at every rooftop films event. So right now, please welcome the American Dollar. When we were accepted here, invited here, um, there was no way I wasn't coming. <laughs> it's just so beautiful. You can see the Manhattan skyline. You're, you're on a rooftop. It makes it feel like a, quite an event. People are getting more than a normal theatrical experience, but actually coming out 
and having a, an experience where the film and the venue and the audience and the filmmaker and the Q&A all kind of work together to create a, a communal experience. I think that's the thing that people most appreciate about going to the movies in general. That's the, the whole point of a movie theater, is to watch movies with people, to experience it, to like, you know, if they're laughing at a joke that you think is funny too, it's a great feeling. I love watching the audience watch our movies. There, there is something so special about actually being in the theater with an audience and getting the, the feel for what everyone is experiencing at, at the same time. We get people to come out and see each other in their community and see their communities reflected back to them on screen so people feel like they're part of something. Yeah, it is nice to every now and then sit back and just, you know, like sit, turn around and look at the audience and, and see how they appreciate it and see the, you know, the light from the screen reflecting off their faces like with a New York City backdrop. It definitely makes me feel like we pulled off a lot more than we ever dreamed we would accomplish. So we're in Austin, Texas, heading towards the Alamo Draft House. And if you Google World's Best Theater, you'll find that the Alamo Draft House shows up consistently on every best of list. So I wanted to find out whether or not the Alamo Draft House can really live up to its reputation. So there's other Alamos, but there, but this one is very uniquely Austin. having fun rather than um, an establishment. It's more like a party. I like the idea and we try to do it as often as possible and that's what we spend a lot of our time as a programming department doing is how can we make going to the movies more than just plopping down in front of a screen. Um, so we like to have personal touches. You know, people can connect to the movie theater, and it's more like a neighborhood movie theater. It's not a nameless, faceless, turn them out multiplex. I want people to know who I am. My name is Cobra Commander. I'm the uh, founder of the Alamo Draft House. And that I'm in there watching movies with them, and I'm part of their community. And all of my programmers, all my staff kind of follow that same mentality. I don't even think about it as showing movies. I think about it as big screen entertainment, and it's not because the screen is big, it's because you can have a crowd around you, and the things that you can do with a crowd change. never been to a sing or quote along that are very important for you to know. Uh, it's actually in the name. You have to sing and quote along. We're going to turn it up to 11 right now with the This Is Spinal Tap Sing and Quote Along! We do a couple of shows like this where we actually encourage people to talk, but not just to talk and say whatever they want, but to quote along with the movie or to sing along with the movie or the videos, and then you get that same sort of community sense. It's I'm an atheist and it's kind of my church. It's like the church of pop culture and so you need to stand up and sing the hymns and every once in a while let your body shake and do the dance a lot. We balance regular you know, films in an unconventional screening environment with very unconventional films and it seems to work out well. Uh, you know, we offer stuff for, for grandma to come see the new Transformers movie. Or they could stay two hours and watch like a really unbelievable, you know, exploitation movie from 1982 where like three people's heads blow up. And we just try to be the only theater that truly gives a shit about movies that have otherwise been forgotten. And that goes in the way we program and in the way we screen them and just the way that people even come out to watch them.
Watching a great movie is a lot of fun. But what if you could eat like a really delicious sandwich while you watched a great movie? Like that would be outrageous. People have like, you know, come to really appreciate that and it almost feels like some great luxury. The food service component of our theater has been controversial since the very beginning. It's challenging for us and sometimes we lapse and sometimes we, we do disturb people because we have to set plates down. Um, but we try to do it incredibly delicately. Our waiters are sort of stealth trained and uh, there's no talking, it's just writing it down and putting it in a clip. And it's no more distracting, we feel, if we're doing it right, than people eating popcorn in a movie theater. And we always view ourselves a movie theater first and a restaurant second. Please do tip your hardworking wait staff, and I'm only bringing this up so I can say the thing that always follows that, which is don't fucking talk during the movie. Ever since the Alamo, you know, kind of created its identity long before I was here, there's always been a really strict don't talk during the movie policy. And there's events, you know, that are different that aren't necessarily just watching a movie where people can have fun and they can kind of bust out. But when we're just screening a movie and we're really getting into it, no matter if it's like a low budget, you know, this action movie from the 80s or whatever, I mean, we treat all the movies with respect. So that brings with it this level of etiquette that we basically demand of the audience, which is, if you talk during the movie, we will kick you the fuck out of the theater, and that's it. And it takes like one babbling jackass to just ruin that for all the rest of the people in the theater that are watching it. If somebody says that we're too hardcore, then they clearly don't get what our aesthetic is. I'm very aware that there's 200 people in an auditorium that paid good money to come and lose themselves in a movie. And if I'm talking, I'm destroying 200 people's lives <laughs> in a very small way. The reason why I got into the movie business in the first place is that I was a movie fan. I love movies. That was my personal escape, and that's how I spent my free time. And I think that more movie theaters need to be run by people that actually are truly, madly, deeply in love with movies. And that needs to come first. And if you use that as your guiding principle, then I think there'd be a lot better exhibition all over the place. Movies mean so much to me, and I can't I can't even, even put into words how much they mean to me and so I made a film about it. One thing that I've learned is that the places where we live our lives matters tremendously. I think in my heart of hearts when I go to a movie, I actually am hoping that this is going to be the greatest movie ever. And I think all of us, to some extent, we want, we want something profound to happen when we go to the film. When I'm experiencing a story with an audience, I really feel like the emotions of the story are amplified. Nothing gives me more pleasure than going to a movie and sharing it with an audience. This is why I brought you here tonight. If that's really the essence of my story, I thought, what better way to end my film than to share it with people that I care about? You're not just part of the screening. You're not just going to be part of the audience. I've invited you into my story. This isn't just an invitation to a screening. You're part of my story now, and it's wonderful. Where is the best galactic travel? Movie theaters. Where can you rub your thighs with strangers? Movie theaters. Where can you watch sex scenes with your family uncomfortably? When can you hold hands with some danger? When you watch movies on the big screen. Movies on the big screen. Movies on the big screen. They are big and they are on an equally big screen. Some strangers share a feeling Movie theaters Or can they do a little healing Movie theaters Or can they do a little drinking Movie theaters When do they wish that they were peeing When they watch movies on the 
Cinnamon. 